Hey everybody, it's Meredith Miller with Inner Integration and today I want to talk about dog whistling, how narcissists and other manipulators will abuse you in front of other people. So I'm making this video because last week we did a throwback video. By the way, when there isn't a new video on YouTube, that week we do a throwback video on Instagram and Facebook. My assistant's putting out little memes every day with quotes from those videos. So always check out Instagram and Facebook when there isn't a new video as well. And we had put up this old video that was talking about reactive abuse. And you know that's where, where the person abuses you and then you emotionally react and then they blame you for emotionally reacting so it's like they accuse you of being the abusive person they get to play the victim and so in, in among those tactics of reactive abuse is dog whistling and people had asked me if I could talk more about that so I said alright let me just make a whole video on that um, to help you guys understand this but first a quick announcement I am so excited to let you know that we launched the inner integration podcast this weekend we've been working really hard to get the first few episodes ready for your binging pleasure so there's three episodes up there now you can go ahead and watch them all through you'll find it on iTunes the links are posted on the inner integration Facebook page with little teaser clips of the episodes and I'll post them in the video description below you'll also see the little Apple insignia on my homepage if you scroll down to the bottom for the social media links and we will be releasing new episodes on Fridays so what is dog whistling this is a political term actually it, technically it's dog whistling politics is the term I adopted this term into the vocabulary around narcissistic abuse because manipulators do this on a personal level too a dog whistle is a frequency that dogs can hear but humans can't. So that's the idea behind this term. Wikipedia describes dog whistle politics as a political messaging implying coded language that appears to mean one thing to the general population but has an, a different, but has an additional, different, or more specific resonance for a targeted subgroup. So what does that mean? Essentially, the dog whistle message has an understandable meaning for the general audience. The regular words, it means something to them, whatever that group is that's pre present in the moment. However, what sounds like normal words to them actually has a secret meaning for only certain people of that group, maybe one person, maybe more, who are in the know, so to speak. So it's very covert. And politicians, for example, will do this uh, you'll see them speaking to other racists and bigots. They'll use specific catchphrases and other racists and bigots will pick that up and they didn't have to openly admit that they're a racist or a bigot, but they connected with their target audience. Um, they'll use dog whistle politics to insult minorities and other oppressed groups. They will use it to stoke the war machine, to stoke the war on terror, especially that's been huge in the last two decades. Um, sometimes they'll use it to give a, a wink to big banks or big pharma or the oil cartel, letting them know that they'll be taken care of, you know, under their, if, if they're elected. So it's a very covert way. They're not straight up expressing racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, anti-immigration, misogyny, misandry as well. So essentially it is bigotry in the form of coded language so that only the person or persons targeted is or are insulted by it. It's like a dog whistle to them. So the person gets away with it, the person who's using the dog whistle politics. So narcissists and other manipulators can be very meticulous with their word choice. You might have noticed that, especially when they're lying or deceiving or trying to go around and not tell you the truth. This is how they get away with dog whistling too on personal and societal levels. So that political level, that's the societal level. They're talking on the news, they're talking on TV, they're talking in public, but they'll do this on a personal level as well, in their family, with their friends, in the office. So all it involves is a, an audience, a group of people. That could be any kind of social group, a work meeting, an interview, a family gathering, like holidays with the families. I know if you grew up with a family like this, you're like, I definitely remember that stuff happening at the dinner table because you couldn't escape it. So it's something only between the manipulator and the target. It's like an inside joke, but it's not funny. Only the target hears it because it's based on something directed 
personally and specifically towards something that happened in the past, some kind of experience event that you guys had together, something you did, something that you said, something that was going on, or something about who you are, or something about who they're trying to tell you that you are, like you're not good enough in some way. Um, so someone had commented, I think it was on Facebook, I can't remember, um, and she was talking about how like she didn't complete her PhD because she decided to save up money working to get the heck out of there. I think it may have been a family narcissistic situation. She wanted to get out of there, so she dropped out of school to make money to get out. And then I think it was her mom who would at family events shame her in front of people, but very covertly talking about so-and-so who had a PhD and how amazing that is and blah, 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 and, and obviously making her feel horrible, but nobody else can really get that at the table. Like nobody's putting that together. They think she's just talking nice about this other person. The only person that feels it is the target, her daughter. So the target feels triggered, yet everyone else hears regular words. So you might even give the manipulator the plausible deniability, the benefit of the doubt, or you might recognize the manipulation, but if you speak up in front of the group, you look mad, like you look crazy, paranoid. They heard something else. They're like, oh no, there's no way that had to do with it because they just weren't involved in that inside knowledge. So the manipulator uses certain language, words, and topics to get under your skin while making the appearance of nothing out of the ordinary, nothing to see here. So maybe, for example, you're taking a car ride with your cousin, your uncle, and your aunt, and your aunt says to her husband, oh, Tell them about that crazy conspiracy theorist you met on the golf course. So he starts laughing and he said, you know, this guy that he met, he was talking about these plain contrails and how they're actually chemtrails and that they're purposely spraying chemicals in the atmosphere and everybody just cracks up, cackling, laughing. And you're just sitting there stewing because you know that your aunt knows that you've been talking about chemtrails for years but she refuses to notice that NASA actually disclosed that they're doing geoengineering and spraying the skies. But anyhow, so your aunt knows that you've been talking about this for years and she staged this performance in the car in front of other people as a punishment for you because a couple of days before you didn't give her what she wanted. She tried to gaslight you and manipulate you and take control of your time, but you didn't let her. So she took it out in this way to abuse you in front of other people. Or maybe you're at the holiday dinner. There's lots of family and your mom knows that you just broke up with your boyfriend or your girlfriend who hurt you or maybe it was a husband or a wife, right? And so she starts a conversation across the table with your cousin about how he or she met the love of his or her life and how wonderful it is and how she deserves it and, you know, how, how true love always comes to those who deserve it. And she just looks like a cheerleader for true love and for their love to the rest of the table. But you're dying inside. So this is how they dog whistle. This is how they trigger you in front of groups of people by saying specific things that will make you upset. So what do you do in this situation? You don't react. You play dumb. Pretend to be like the others. <sighs> Went right over your head, didn't bother you. You weren't even thinking about that. You didn't even notice the correlation. Breathe, because you're gonna be upset. Breathe and watch your face. Don't give away your hand with emotional expression. So, you know, if you're looking really angry or you're making some kind of face or you're sitting there with contempt on your face, you know, something like that or disgust, like they know they got you. So you got to work on your poker face to not reveal that. And then after you want to go work out the anger and the other emotions later when you're safe at home or wherever it is that's far away from that abusive person. So that's what dog whistling is. I'm sure now that you're hearing this, you're like, oh, I can think of a whole bunch of examples where this happened with various different abusers. So, you know, just be very careful. It's, it's a form of gaslighting and it's a form of manipulation and it's how they can make you feel like you're going crazy. It's how they can make you look crazy in front of other people if you react. And that's why it's so important that you don't react and give them that. So I'm sending you all a big hug.